So as you guys can tell, it is pretty windy. I don't know if what we're con what we're getting is considered a nor'easter, but it's a it's a big storm coming in. 25 mile an hour winds, it's gonna be in my face. We'll see what happens. We are fishing. Beautiful water. Hopefully we catch some stripers. Maybe some fluke. Do a catch and cook if we catch a fluke. I don't know. It's supposed to downpour on us in about an hour or so, so it's gonna be an interesting video. Let's go. Bracing for the storm, I walked to my spot and started taking cast after cast. I saw some birds working to my left and they were diving in the water, so I made some moves. So I looked over to my left and there's a lot of birds working this one area. So I'm gonna to try to walk over there as quick as possible and try to get there before the birds leave. I walked over to the birds and the wind was ripping right at me. I tied on an SP minnow for distance, but couldn't quite make it to the birds. The birds are a little too far out for me. That really stinks. Literally, if I had 10 more feet in my cast, I'd be in the birds, but took a bunch of casts into them and not even a bite. So I'm gonna go around here where this rip is going in, see if I can get the cast a little farther. I moved over to a spot a little bit to my side and still couldn't quite make the cast, so I switched back to a spot. Made my way back and found a point with big boulders and decided to give it a shot. I made a couple casts, but there wasn't anything happening there. I made another move and scanned the water before committing to the move. Walked up on a floating dock and learned I still have my sea legs. I spent some time there and made cast after cast with a swim bait and a bottom bait, the smooch and release silicone jig. Hoping to get fluke on the incoming tide. Nothing happened there either, so I moved again until I found a bend, a pool, where I could work the sandy bottom for some fluke. But to everyone's surprise, caught a sea robin on a jig with gold. Well, we didn't get skunked. Got a little sea robin. Mwah. Let's change things up. So I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna try to go for either bluefish or stripers or something like that. But since it's super windy in my face, I'm gonna switch up to some spoons just to get some more distance out there. Took a cast with a tin and... a sea rock.
Can't make this up. <laughs> Throw in a deadly dick for some stripers and blues and end up catching a beautiful sea robin, but not my target. Mwah. I moved again until I got to a point with moving water. I tried swim baits and top water and the deadly dick once again. Nothing. Time to leave and go to a new location. I began walking in marshes, getting wet and muddy, walking in tall grass, dodging ticks and mosquitoes and no see in the process. all while interrupting some fiddler crab get together. Nothing happened and I went home. Time for day two in search of food. What's up everyone? This is a new day, new spot. We took a big L the other day trying to find fish and it just didn't work out for us. So we're here trying a new spot. Hopefully we get some more fish. This is, as you can tell, a higher tide. So hopefully we get some fluke for Miss Bob and uh, we can do a catch and cook. Maybe we'll catch some stripers. I don't know, but this is our last spot that I'm going to try to choose to catch fish for this video. If it doesn't work, then... Yeah. I walked to a point where I was hoping there'd be some fluke, or even some striped bass. To my surprise, I couldn't catch a single thing until a school of sea robin decided to make their appearance. It killed the skunk and changed my mood, and after hours of no fish, I walked back and found this thing. All right, this is the first time that I've ever actually seen one of these bad boys with a giant slug in it. Jeez, that whole thing is slug. That's crazy. Today we are not in a new spot, but we are targeting fluke specifically. We're going to start off with, as you know, a swim bait just to see if there's anything around. But we are going to be targeting some fluke with the smooch early silicone jigs. We got a beautiful foggy day. It's going to be 80 something degrees right now at 73. And uh, we're hoping for some fish because Erica wants a fluke and uh, she wants some dinner. I'm not allowed to go home unless I catch some dinner. And I think I can catch some fish here, especially with this heat. So let's see what happens. Hopefully we get it, but hey. I'm gonna switch out the swim bait for one of the smooch release silicone jigs. I think we're gonna throw on a three quarter in white and chartreuse. That's a three quarter. Just throwing a regular old clinch knot onto here. The gulp bags always leak, so always put them inside another another storage and try to keep them facing up at all times.
big fish, whatever it is. Here we go. Got our keeper fluke. There we go, 19 inch fluke on the spike silicone jig. We got our keeper. Nice. Woo. Mwah. After finally catching my first keeper fluke within 57 hours of fishing, I decided to make a couple more casts with the silicone jig and hook into a sea robin. Just a bird. When I pulled it up, a family clapped for me, so I took a bow. Beautiful colors though. Mwah. So when targeting fluke, I like to have a rod that's about seven foot, maybe seven foot three. Uh, from shore. That way I have nice casting range because what you're doing is basically you're dragging or jigging or hopping something off the bottom so you want to cover as much land as possible. So I like to, with the 15 pound braid as opposed to the 20, I like to cast out really really far and just work the bottom, give it a little jerk like that, reel up, jerk, make sure it touches bottom and pop it back up. This is only one way to catch fluke. I mean there's multiple ways and we'll do multiple videos on how to do it and uh, different techniques and different rigs and jigs and stuff like that. But man, these silicone jigs, they produce fish, always. I decided to move spots, change out the water in the fluke bucket and take more casts with the jig. I had to horse this fish in to make sure he didn't get stuck in the rocks. I didn't want to lose another fish and another jig. And I pulled up another fluke. So this guy's probably, I'd say 16. He's a little tiny dude. Um, yeah. On the silicone jig, they catch fluke. When there's fluke around. <laughs> Look at them blending in like that. That's awesome. There we go. Dang, he's fast. Once again, on the three quarter ounce smooch and release silicone jig. Fun stuff, man. It's about time. It's taken days to catch fluke. Actually, it's taken days to land fluke. I lost a big one, but thank God. First, first flounder of the, of the year is a little stiff, frozen and stuff. This is the first time I'm ever filleting something, so. Don't hit the comments too bad, but let's see what we can do. I know you go down the middle here. Was that the spine? I have no idea. <laughs> I know I, I gotta run it against bone of some sort. I'm probably gonna leave a lot of meat on here, but just like everything, you gotta start somewhere. We'll learn at some point. So you gonna eat this one? I'm gonna try. Okay. I'm gonna have a lot of Benadryl on hand though, just in case. I'm not gonna lie, I thought I'd do much worse. <laughs> Looks good. The meat's only on one side of them, right? Two sides. Oh, it's on both sides? 
Alright. That don't look so bad. There's a fillet. Look at that. That didn't no look too much. No bone. Yeah. Looks good, doing a good job. Looks like you're getting the meat. That's the most important thing. So it's gonna take it slow. That's all. Being a growing up, you weren't allowed to eat fish. We never, never had, never had to fillet anything because yeah. we never were able to have it. So I mean, just two years ago, touching a fish like this would give me an allergic reaction. So there's another fillet. So when are you cooking these up? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? If I can get it off the fish. They run it right on top of those ribs. It looks fine. So catch and cook. Money is this gonna be your first catch and cook or? My first catch and cook ever, yeah. I think I'm gonna leave the skin on. <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah. I don't think this I don't think my skill and this knife's sharpness level will be able to uh, de-skin this fish. There you go. You well, get four nice fillets, look huh? Look at that. That's not bad. I mean, you take a spoon or a fork in there, maybe I left a little bit of meat. Again, I mean, it looks like there's some meat there, but I wasn't sure of the anatomy of this thing. So, yeah, I mean. There you go. That's ribs. Good job. Left a little, actually no, that's just skin. Left a little little line here and here. That was my first fillet. That was my second fillet. And then I guess once I figured it out, I got a good fillet cut. There you go. All right, I learned something new every day. And uh, we're gonna cook these bad boys up for Erica. Let's go.